In the second part of this assignment, we're going to create a heart with Gravit. Now we're already in Gravit. We don't have, you can always log in again, but I'm going to do this right away. And I'm going to close up my Clover shape that I was working on. So I'll just close it. And then I could just say create and create a new one. And here's a new document. And you could save this right away if you want, or you could get started. And instead of starting with a rectangle, we're going to go into this shape mode and we're going to create an ellipse, which is basically a circle. And again, you could just kind of do it manually. If you want to change the size, about 400 is working okay on my screen. You know, it doesn't have to be that size. But knowing that the width and height is the same, that'll make it a perfect circle. And again, it starts off with just kind of a generic gray in the middle here. And if we want to adjust anchor points, these are not anchor points. Notice there's a bounding box, even though it's a circle, it has a bounding box going around it of kind of the where the, the widest part of it's at. So it always puts a box around the shape no matter what kind of shape you have. And again, you can't manipulate anchor points even when you use the subselect tool on these generic kind of shapes, these generic polygons, you have to go and convert it to a path. So we're gonna convert it to path first. And that's a difference in Illustrator that you don't have to do. But in here, they tell you to convert it to a path. And now you can see the anchor points. There's four of them and they're obviously curve points because they're maintaining a smooth transition and they're all probably the same that would be really hard to draw freehand but they're actually the same going all around when you click on them you could see the handle that manipulates the curve on each side see this has one handle that kind of makes the curve go this way this has a handle that makes the curve go that way that's how it makes the nice arc that's created there so these are all curve points there's all smooth connections between line segments that are here and what we're going to do here is just do a couple just conversions of anchor points from curve to corner. First thing we'll do is we'll drag this thing down to make like kind of a like a squashed bean or something. And we'll drag it kind of close to the middle. We could always adjust it later. I'm going to scroll down a little and then I'm going to move this down, this bottom anchor point. And again, I'm using my sub select tool. And it's kind of like an alien head. If you picture two eyes here, this looks like an alien head in movies. I might even drag this down more. And what we're going to do here, you could do this a couple of different ways. Right now, this is a, well, I don't know what kind it is. I don't know if it's mirrored or not. I think, no, it's not mirrored. So I can, and the reason I know that is because, well, one thing, if I look here, it says asymmetric. Another thing, I can move it like this, which is a seesaw. But if I stretch this, the other one doesn't stretch. And what I'm going to do first, you could do it different ways. You could drag one side up like that and make kind of a heart shape, meaning that's the kind of the right side of a heart. Now, if you went to drag this up, it would make the other side go down again. So what you can do is choose this one, which is disconnected. Now, I could have done that right away as well, but I'm going to go to disconnected, and that lets me drag this handle up, and I'm going to rotate it around kind of like, a, like the hand of a watch. I'll put this one at like... I guess would be 11 o'clock, and this one's at about 1 o'clock, something like that. These things look like TV antennas that are here. Now, it still doesn't look like a heart because it's not pointy at the bottom, but we can change that very easily. We could click here, and if you use straight under this joint section here, if you use straight, it'll just kind of make it to a point. So now we have a nice heart shape. And if you wanted to color it, you can still use fill. You don't have to go back to the pointer you can still use subselect and go back to here. And if you click right in the middle here, I'm just gonna choose like a red color. And maybe you wanna change it to a radial gradient. And now it's doing red and black again. And this side I'll do, I'll do white in the middle. There's white. And then on this side I'll do red. And you could, you know, you could click here and put a pink in there if you wanted to, whatever you wanna do. And also, if you needed to move this around, if you grab on the blue here, you could kind of put it up here and adjust it a little bit. Looks like a little highlight up there. You could put that like on fruit or something, make it look like there's a highlight. So you can move that around, and this scales it. So if you need to make this bigger, I'll just scroll a little bit. If you need to make the, the highlight a little bit bigger. Now, it's not getting very big because we have pink in there. So you, you could extend this and put more pink in that, or you don't even have to have another color there or not. Now, also, another thing we're going to do, I'll go back to editing these points. I'm still on subselect tool, so I'll click on my shape. And one thing you could do down here, now, if we wanted to make a heart that has like kind of a streamline where it, it's like an S shape here, what you can do is you can disconnect again. 
I could put disconnected. Now, when it does that, it, it kind of puts these handles out here. But if you grab one and you pull it in and you actually make it go in. And what I mean by in, this one's kind of coming out. This one's kind of coming in. So it's making this very slight S shape. And then you just do the same thing with the other side. Drag this one up and make it symmetrical. And notice that goes in. This is coming out. That's going in. That's where you're getting that S shape there. So now we have this, this little almost a teardrop kind of shape here. And you could move these things around and tweak it, do whatever you want. If you need to move the anchor point, you just go right on the anchor point. If you wanted to move this down a little bit, you know, anything you need to do to make it look better or to customize it, you can do. So you can move the anchor points. You can move the handles on here. You can lengthen and shorten the handles. You can see these are working asymmetrical. So if I lengthen the handle, the other one is not. So you got to be careful with these. You don't want things at weird angles or anything. You want to keep them fairly straight. So this is all we're doing with the heart. We did the, the gradient. Now we're still going to go back and just experiment with the drop shadow again. So if I go down to effects, that's under effects down here. There's drop shadow and I could just click on it. And if I put in 10 and I'll just hit tab 10 tab 10 and I'll put 50 here again like I did on the other one. Now we have a nice little drop shadow here. And again what we did is we took our curve anchor points and converted it to a corner here by making it disconnected. By disconnected it naturally forms a corner point. It's like a corner point with handles. We could have taken away the corner points. I mean you could you could go on this and make it straight but now because it's straight there's no handle here that's making that arch on this side of it. So that's why we, we want handles on both sides. So, so this is also a corner point but by having a handle there and I'll just undo it by having a handle there this handle controls this side of the curve this handle controls this side of the curve and that makes that nice little archy shape. And then down here we did this two ways. One is we just sucked in the handles by using straight like that and the other way was using disconnected where we just kind of move them independently of each other and made the one kind of come in a little bit to get that teardrop shape. So that's the heart shape. That's all we're doing is just kind of exploring the way vector paths work, the way their connectors work. They call them joints here. We call them anchor points in Illustrator. And usually there's two types, curve and corner. Curve are always like nice and smooth connected and corner can be have handles or they can just be straight without handles. So again, if you want to share this, First, I'd recommend saving it. So we could go to File, Save, and we could just go File, Save. And I'll just call this Six Heart, because we made a heart. And I'll save it, and you can see there's my clover. And I'll save this here. And there it says, my Six Heart. It says it's syncing it. And now if I want to share it and turn it in. Now I could always go back and log in and open it and make changes. But right now I'm going to share it as an assignment. And again, I'll copy it. So I'm copying that link and then I'm going back to coursework. Now if you already have a comment here you could just hit edit the pencil and what I'd recommend is clicking here once and hitting enter or return and then instead of pasting remember go here insert a link and then paste your link here make sure you choose new window hit OK and hit save and now you have two links one that's going to the Clover that you'll see in a second. There it is. And then one that's going to a heart. And there's the heart. So that's all you're doing for this. Just a little exploration of vector graphics using Gravit, which is again is very much like Illustrator. And we're doing it on online so we could save our images online and go back and edit them online without having to download anything. And it's free, so it's a nice thing. I like Gravit. It's very, very easy to use and fairly professional. We didn't even mess with the pages. We can make multiple pages and paths and things like that. But just as an intro, this is our EX6 that we did in CSC 103. And we will do a little bit with computer graphics and doing this here when we don't have the Illustrator at home to work on. So that's Gravit doing some vector graphics with a heart and clover.